Well, good morning, Greenwich, and welcome to the Tuesday, October 8th edition of the Basement Academy. Uh, before we dive into a couple more of our questions from the Academy, I want to read a portion of Psalm 68. <clears throat> it's a pretty long psalm, and I commend it to your entire praying <laughs> Uh, morning or whenever you say your prayers, but I, I want to read uh, and offer as prayer here just the first few verses. May God arise, may his enemies be scattered, may his foes flee before him. As smoke is blown away by the wind, may you blow them away. As wax melts before the fire, may the wicked perish before God. May the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. May they be happy and joyful. Sing to God. Sing praise to his name. Extol him who rides on the clouds. His name is the Lord. And rejoice before him. A father to the fatherless. A defender of widows is God in his holy dwelling. God sets the lonely in families. He leads forth the prisoners with singing. Amen. Lord, be that to us. <laughs> uh, be our defender, be our keeper, be our shepherd, and arise, O Lord. Cause the enemies without and within to be scattered. Okay, uh, two questions that I think I can bundle together. I think I can bundle these. The, the first, are the extremes, and that's in quotes, that's how it came to me, are the extremes of eco worse than the extremes of the PCUSA? <clears throat> Good question. <laughs> the, the second one is going to have to deal, deal with the, the freedom of conscience and essential tenets. Is there a contradiction between having freedom of conscience, those historical principles, and yet having a set of essential tenets that officers, ministers must believe. <clears throat> I think they bundle together. See if I can, I can get there with you. So the first question, very interesting. Um, I, don't, I appreciate that extremes are put in, in quotes. What I can say is I don't know the extremes of eco because I'm not in eco, right? So, so I'm going to have to get at that a, a little differently. But I will assume they're there because people are there, <laughs> right? So eco's not the promised land, right? There's no denomination that is the kingdom of God. <clears throat> Since there are people in eco, there will be problems in eco, right? Just as there are problems in people in the Peace USA. And so with respect to the extremes of the peace USA, let me start there. I, I, for some of us, we might think the extremes of the peace USA are an understanding of, of sin, a way of reading the scripture that sees sin not as something personal as much as structural and systemic. That, that is clearly one of the emphases that has emerged in recent years within the Peace USA, that, that we're trying to address the structural issues of our world, structural racism, systemic poverty, uh, and, and the like. And so that may be what the, the questioner may have in mind. Uh, or, as I was talking about last week, you know, how, do, how does Peace USA read the scripture? Well, these frameworks that see power, the power dynamics, oppression, uh, and, and the like, and this, this prophetic call that we read in Scripture to loose the chains of injustice, to overturn these kind of tables of injustice, if I could use that metaphor there. So many perceive those frameworks perhaps as unbiblical. There, there's been some of that rhetoric uh, and language in our forums, the unbiblical positions of the peace would say, well, they're biblical. They just don't, aren't read the same way that, that you and I would, would read them. And then you've got issues, the peace USA's position on reproductive rights or abortion, 
um, marriage being not just a man and a woman, um, uh, you know, race, poverty, all, all those matters that the piece would say is lifting up as things that we as a denomination and as Christians should be concerned with, those may be perceived as the extremes, you know, ordaining same-sex individuals, you know, folks in a same-sex relationship, et cetera. So I don't know exactly what was meant, but that's what I'm going to assume, okay? And so there's an upside and a downside to being in the Peace USA. The, the, the downside is that, you know, at Greenwich, we have felt, many of us feel like we're off-brand. Uh, the trajectory of the denomination keeps moving in a, in a direction that, that, you know, feels extreme, I, I, to, to, to say it that way. And so for many, there's been a guilt, a, a sense of guilt by association. There are... Each of us have our own sense of these things, but my observation is kind of through my parents and, and maybe those of an older generation, joining was very important. The, 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 the groups that you do join, I, I respect that. You want to be in alignment with the groups that you join, right? And so <clears throat> um, I think that's the, the downside of being in the PCUSA for many has been I've got the sense of these are not my people, this is not my tribe, et cetera. The upside of being in the Peace USA, I have found as a minister of 32 years, uh, just last Friday was the, the anniversary, my 32nd anniversary of being ordained, October 4th. <clears throat> and so I've been thinking about some of these things about being in a denomination that I, I struggle with. The upside of being in the Peace USA is it provides a foil against which I have been able to clarify, I think, the scriptures. I, I, I respect people's interpretations. They, they come at things differently. That gives me an opportunity to speak to my understanding of scripture and how how I believe scripture's teaching this, this way. So So the it, the, every challenge presents an opportunity. So the challenge of being off-brand provides the opportunity of clarifying something for the gospel. I don't care that much for denominations. You heard me talk this yesterday. That's kind of that factions and sectarian mentality that we need to avoid. So denominations, heh, you know, I get it. We need them, but I don't care that much about them. It provide the peace USA has provided me an opportunity to speak the gospel clearly, and I'm not ashamed uh, of that. So I'm not ashamed of being in the peace USA. I, I, I don't have that problem. Many I know at Greenwich have talked about that. That's not my struggle. My concern is what I'm teaching might be offensive to people, and so out of love, you know, perhaps I, sh you know, should consider withdrawing. And that that's where this whole thing began. And so I see the upside of being in the Peace USA that may have extremes. It allows me to hew to the middle and hew to the to the truth uh, in, in situations. And there is some truth that our Peace USA friends are lifting up, the concern for justice and like. Again, go back and uh, listen to last week's Basement Academy. So I, I see the opportunity to speak a clear word. Now, with eco, the extremes of eco, I just don't know them because I'm not in eco, right? We'll discover those along the way. But given that it is a more conservative denomination and it has branded itself as such, I would anticipate the extremes that kind of nip at the heels of the conservative communities. Extremes like being Pharisees. Anybody who doesn't read the Bible the way we read the Bible has to be in error. The smugness of the Pharisees that comes with that. So eco, I don't know. Eco may be beset a little bit by a smugness of, well, at least we're not sinful like the PCUSA. Wink, wink, nod, nod. I, I, that, that would be an extreme there may be some of that there because those kind of things show up in conservative circles. It's the Pharisee and the tax collector there, the parable that Jesus told. The Pharisee lifts his eyes to heaven and says, thank God I'm not like other men. And this man in particular, the 
poor tax collector who's beating his chest saying, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. The smugness of the Pharisees is something that we'll have to be uh, aware of. We might encounter some of that. Um, Eco may be less tolerant, less understanding, less forbearing, to use the language of mutual forbearance. The, 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 uh, eco may be less forbearing of diverse views, and, and it may be less concerned about social justice issues. Again, I don't know because I'm not in eco. We might not know that for a while, right? Once you get, get, get inside. So, you know, all of us have heard about a great restaurant and we've gone to the restaurant and all of a sudden, woo, that was not what I thought. I, I don't think that's going to happen with eco. So I'm not, I, I'm not speaking against eco. I'm just acknowledging we're going to run into something. I just don't know what it is, but I do perceive the sins of my tribe, the conservative evangelical tribe, to be kind of a haughtiness, a looking down on others, uh, an overconfidence that this is the only way to read the Bible, right? You can't have any diverse opinion on certain matters. And I believe within conservative communities, there's a tendency to get nitpicky about certain theological minutia. And it's not minutia because it's the word of God and, and, and you know, this particular view of X, you know, is the most important view. And so, again, it's the truth, grace, balance beam. Eco is going to fall off the balance beam on the side of truth. So it's going to struggle maybe at times with grace, to be gracious towards folks who might think differently or, you know, practice their faith a little differently. Peace USA falls off the side of the balance beam on the side of grace and so looks at truth as being narrow-minded and mean and bigoted, etc. So the it, we're going to we're going to fall off on the side of truth. And so we're going to be in a denomination that, that may, may struggle uh, in that way. And so I think one of my observations about the conservative evangelical communion is we do seem to care a little less about engagement with the world. We do care a lot more about studying our Bibles and being theologically accurate and making sure we're not tainted by error and falsehood and the like. And so we tend to spend a lot of times in Bible studies where our social justice-minded uh, friends in the Peace USA and other denominations are more interested, less in the Bible study, more in getting out and serving the poor, etc. I'm not saying we don't care about those things, but again, evangelicals tend a, a little bit. The, the one extreme that I think we might run into, it, it's already at Greenwich. It, 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 there's, there's bubbles of this. Uh, it, it bubbles up from time to time, this political fusion. It really ties to the question that I was trying to get at yesterday, where some may not like that I don't tell you how you should vote and vote in a particular direction, right? I say, I, you, I'm leaving that to you. Uh, wedding, uh, the ma marrying our faith and our politics, um, there's, there's a version of this that, that bubbles up into something called Christian nationalism, that God only cares about America, or he cares more about America than other nations, and he cares about one political party more than others, uh, one color of political party more than another. And, and so I refer you to yesterday's reflection. Now, uh, j just to wrap up in a few minutes here, I think it, it so, so those are some initial thoughts. I, I don't know if the extremes of eco are going to be worse or not, because I'm not there yet, right? So we'll just have to pay attention. But the second question is, isn't there, is there or isn't there a contradiction between freedom of conscience and this notion of having a set of essential tenets? So last week I was talking about the historic principles of church order that we have in our current Book of Order, the PCUSA, that's the only denomination we're in right now. The PCUSA has the historic principles of church order dating back to the late 1700s, really growing out of something known as the Adopting Act of 1729 when Presbyterianism hits the shores of the colonies, the British colonies. And how will we adjudicate differences within the Presbyterian fellowship? 
And so ministers may declare a scruple to the Westminster Confession. There's a, a kind of a narrow set of uh, confessions, the Westminster Confession and the larger and shorter catechism. So the, the Westminster Standards, as it's called. And so that's all Presbyterians said, this is the confession. This is what the faith is. And ministers would say, you know, I don't know if I agree with that part of it. And then the presbytery would determine whether or not, when they're examining that minister, whether or not that departure would allow would be too great. You may not be a member of our presbytery. You can't be one of our ministers because you've departed from the essential and necessary articles. And so this tension around having essential tenets or not enumerated, spelled out, is a long one within the uh, Presbyterian Church. And so reading again from the this Chapter three, God alone is Lord of the conscience and hath left it free from the doctrines and commandments of men, which are in anything contrary to his word or beside it in matters of faith and, and, and worship. So the Presbyterian Church USA has had this, this kind of foundation of freedom of conscience and you have to own it and then you're responsible for that. And if a Presbytery says, no, I'm sorry, that's too great a departure, then I, I'm answering to God, not the Presbytery. And so that's like Martin Luther. Here I stand. I could do no other. And they kicked him out of the Roman Catholic Church, right? So there's that. Well, guess what? In ECO, there is no abiding by these historic principles of freedom of conscience. I searched the polity. It's not there. It does have the essential tenets. I, I just went through those, what, a few weeks ago, right, on replay, and so these, these are core foundational truths that the officers of this church must believe. Pastors, elders, deacons must believe these. There is no language of the historic principles of freedom of conscience. There is no chapter three like we've got in our PCUSA book of order. And so there is, I don't know if I'd say contradiction, but I would say tension. I would say tension between this freedom of conscience, God alone is the Lord of my conscience, and yet there is this defined set of truths, essential tenets, essential teachings drawn from the scriptures uh, and the confessions that we must believe and, uh, and, and be bound by and adopt in order to be a minister. You don't have to do that to be a member of an eco-church. You have to believe in Jesus. <laughs> That's the condition of membership uh, in an eco-church is faith in Christ. But to serve as an officer, uh, a teaching elder, a pastor, uh, a ruling elder, uh, a deacon, then, then these essential tenets must also be embraced. And not everybody may feel comfortable embracing all of them. The, the, the two that I think will be particularly challenging will be, it does call for an what's called an egalitarian position, seeing women as being eligible for ordination as deacons, as elders, and as pastors, and that is preaching to the flock of men and women. And there are some people at Greenwich and plenty of people on planet Earth and the Christian church that don't believe women should be preaching. Eco doesn't have a freedom of conscience around that. It says these are the essential tenets, and if you can't affirm a woman's ordination, then you can't be a pastor, an elder, or a deacon in eco. And, and it's free to do that, right? It, every church gets to determine its own boundaries of membership, both as members and then as officers. And so I predict there will be some tension around that that folks at Greenwich have enjoyed the PCUSA and its freedom of conscience. Nobody from the PCUSA or National Capital has ever come to Greenwich and says, you can't teach that, you can't preach that. But in eco, they could. If I stood up as an eco pastor saying that um, I've decided I changed my mind on the ordination of women and I teach that and preach that, ECO has the authority to remove me then from office. You know, so the freedom of conscience that we've enjoyed in the Peace USA, we're not going to have as much freedom around things that people care about. Uh, the other um, 
item that I think folks may struggle with is it does come down in a more traditionally Calvinist position that God is the one who calls people, elects people unto salvation. And that's embedded in the essential tenets. And so if you grew up in a different tradition, a Baptistic tradition, where there's freedom of will and I can backslide and lose my salvation and all of those things, the kind of the traditional Calvinist Arminian debate, eco lands in a different place. And so there are some folks who might not be as comfortable uh, around that as well. And so, yeah, there's tension. I don't know if contradiction, but there's tension, but eco doesn't have this freedom of conscience in its in its founding documents so it's free then to hold people to these standards um the concern has been over the years in the presbyterian church usa that has the freedom of conscience presbyterians have been known historically for conducting heresy trials i'm just going to say it that we were people of the book we care about our theology and so in the history of our tradition, the Presbyterian tradition, heresy trials, you believe the wrong thing, we're going to remove you from office. Worst case scenario, you burn them at the stake, right? You know, and there's some, there's some sad stories in the history of the church around heresy trials. The Presbyterian Church USA has kind of turned away from that. I think the PCA, the Orthodox... The, the PCA, the OPC, I don't know about EPC, ECO, I don't know if ECO's ever had a heresy trial that might in the future. It would wrap around these kind of things. You're free to express that view. You just can't be one of our ministers. I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to scare people about ECO, but there is a, a difference there. So I think it somehow these two questions tie together. I'm going to close with this. When I was in seminary at Gordon Conwell Seminary up in the Boston area, and I had attended, a, I was a member of a PCA church, which is the more narrower conservative uh, denomination that broke off from the mainline church back in the late 60s, early 70s. And I was in a PCA church, and then I went to seminary, and that I didn't realize Presbyterian this versus Presbyterian that. You were just either Presbyterian or Methodist or Baptist or whatever. I didn't understand the nuances of Presbyterianism. And then I go uh, to Kansas and I serve as a youth director, which is in a PCUSA church. And then I go to seminary. So I've actually been in the PCA and I've been, now been in the PCUSA. And I didn't really, I was coming to understand those differences when I go to seminary. Well, now I got to choose. <laughs> Am I going to go PCA as a minister? Am I going to go PCUSA as a minister? And I, I was back in Charlottesville um, uh, visiting my old church, Trinity Presbyterian, and had occasion to visit with my pastor, uh, Skip Ryan, my former pastor, Skip Ryan. And I was raising this to him. I said, Skip, I'm, I'm kind of not sure where to go. And he said, let me ask you a question. Donnie, because that's how folks of old know me, right? Donnie. Would you rather be thought of as a liberal in a conservative denomination or as a conservative in a liberal denomination? Like, hmm, I'd never heard that question before. But almost immediately, I knew the answer. I would much rather be perceived as the conservative in the liberal denomination because in a, if you're a liberal in a conservative denomination, they come after you. <laughs> Conservatives go after liberals. My experience in the church, in the Peace USA church, no liberal presbytery has ever come after this conservative pastor. And so thank you, Skip. I, I'm so thankful for that guidance. That was how I sense it. You may not be comfortable as a conservative in a liberal denomination. It has done nothing but give me opportunity for ministry and influence for which I'm thankful. So don't know if I've answered the questions adequately, but that's my answer. Uh, let me close here and we'll pick up tomorrow with another question. Let's pray. And so Father, thank you. 
Thank you for your grace and mercy to each of us. Help us, Lord, guard us, protect us from extremes, guard us from error, guard us from attacking fellow Christians for the views that they may hold. And keep us, O Lord, keep us, O Lord, in your truth and in your grace. For we follow one who was full of grace and truth, and we make our prayer in his name, even as he taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. May the Lord of grace and truth fill you with his spirit today and every day as you seek to follow him and love your neighbor in the truth and grace of Jesus. Bless you now and forever. Amen.